Guys, it's been a long time coming, but I'm proud to announce that my hands are finally registered with the International Registry of Lethal Hands. This is the only place where your God-given gifts of danger can get the recognition that they truly deserve. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would anybody need to register their hands as lethal? Let me break it down for you. There are those among us whose hands are so downright dangerous, they need to be documented. Registration is a moral responsibility and it's a vote for the greater good of humanity. The sole mission of the International Registry for Lethal Hands is to catalog the most formidable hands on the planet. So if you know someone and you even suspect they possess lethal hands, do not hesitate. Register them immediately. And if you've ever looked at your own hands and thought, damn, these dogs are dangerous, don't settle. Go register. Head over to registeryourhands.com, fill out a simple form, and you're official. Remember, use the promo code jail to save 20% or just click on the link below. I just went around Miami and I asked five random people at five different locations from the restaurant to the Uber, to the side, uh, sidewalk, right? I asked five random people, do you know George Mosfidal? Just do you know him? King of Miami, he says, no, no, they all. And five for five said, well, can we have a picture with you, Chael? Now, I gotta tell you, if you came to West Lynn and you ask anybody about Chael, you could even get it wrong. You could, you could, but Chael, you could even start to say, hey, that guy, that, uh, that, uh, they'll know. 100% will know. If you say, well, you know where I can find him? They will all tell you the same thing. Don't go looking for him. Do not put the word out that you're looking for him. They didn't know who George Mosfidal was. Now, I don't say this for any other reason than I've never given Mosfidal a hard time. And I've never given him a hard time because I've tried to build him up. And I've tried to build him up because I look out for guys like George Mosfidal. Truly, that, that isn't a joke. And I don't hold George Masvidal to a professional equivalency standard, but I don't hold him to an intellectual standard. I just don't. But I also didn't know he was this stupid. Michael Bisping laughed at him with the idea. Michael Bisping then provided a photo of him Michael Bisbee then suggested a different fight for him with somebody more his size. My issue with Masvidal, it's the truth that hurts, right? I've known George Masvidal a long time. George Masvidal knows a lot of things. He hasn't gone there yet. He hasn't gone there. I'm not completely convinced that he's not going to. I mean, I must tell you, that bothers me. And... When I'm done with my fight career, which is now, you do have to understand, I attempt to be polite. I attempt to look polite. I didn't always be polite and look polite for my family, things my mother has to see and it's out there and her bunco group is asking her. So then you try to correct it in life. You guys can all relate to this. Maybe you weren't the nicest guy in high school, so you try to correct for it later. You go back to the class reunion, you make sure you shake everybody's hand. Like there's, there's just things in life that you do, right? But. When I saw George Masvidal and Michael Bisping show, I mean, let's just get a couple of things very clear amongst us. I have never given George a hard time, and I have built George up. I have told you guys, in all fairness, I have told you the grit that I appreciate him. I told you stories about when he was 21 years old and he was in Bodog fighting, how hungry he was, and different things that he did. But he goes on Michael's show, and again, when you get to the spot that we're in now, Part of the code, part of the reason you did it in the first place, there's then a respect that you will live the rest of your life with. That's just the way it is for anybody that did anything for that matter. And George began to lay out a case of nonsense, right? I mean, I've referenced a couple of times that this is a dumb dog, but to this degree of delusion, right? I, I have visions of grandeur that are most likely a little above where I was at. They say, the older I get, the better I was. That's true for all human beings. We can all relate to this, right? But George has a very bizarre understanding 
of his own career. I've always liked him. I've always praised him for being gritty tough. Okay, look, let, let me stand pointing. This is specifically what he tells Michael Bisping. He tells Michael Bisping, talking about me, that I'm a crotch sniffer. Now, there's different expressions within the sport. I don't know what that means. I know what a crotch is. I know what a, I know what sniff is. I'm not familiar with that term. He's a crotch sniffer. Now, I was trying to figure it out. That's not a vernacular that, I, that I, I'm just not familiar with it. I think it had something to do with grappling. But I, I really didn't get it. George Mosborough was talking. So, so for that reason of crotch sniffing, so that I wouldn't, he wants to box me. And he's going to pay me. Gotta hear what, you got to hear what he said. First off, he said he owns a company called Inbred. And I, that was just unfair. It was un uncomfortable for me. It was very uncomfortable. I thought, oh, George, somebody's got to tell you what that means. Okay. But he's going to give me the biggest bag. These are George's words. This is the head of this organization. He's going to give me the biggest bag. Why would you offer me the biggest bag? I mean, if you want me to respect you as a businessman, why would you offer me the biggest bag? If I'm promoting the fight with us, George, I'll get the fight, and I'm not going to pay you your biggest bag. I'm not going to have to pay you what other people did, because I'm a good promoter. I'm going to pick the fight. I'm going to get you to do the fight. I'm going to make a whole bunch of money off the fight. I'm not going to give you the biggest check you've ever gotten. But he offered to give it to me. So right out of the gate, and I did appreciate this, but right out of the gate, he's admitting he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a negotiation with me. Fuck, whatever. Whatever, I never bragged about those. Don't really care. Thought it was interesting that the head of a company that he accidentally named Inbred went and said something so stupid. <laughs> he then says, he'll even put into the contract that he won't throw the right hand. Now, let me cut right to the chase. Okay, great. What else? What, what what else can we do? I mean, we're good right there. We were good before we got there. Before we got to the money and when you had both hands and your limbs and your elbows and your crotch and your sniffing and the whole bit, we were good. But but I like where this is going. So you're going to pay me big money. Oh, and by the way, you're not going to throw your right hand? Great. Actually said he would put it in contract. <laughs> I mean, this is one dumb son of a bitch. But I can't let that slide for the record. I don't care if he uses both hands. I don't care if he puts something in both hands. I do not care in the least. I have an ego too. If he was ever to make believe that there was a fight offer that I didn't accept. And I, I would like to go back to that because he, he did mention some things about my career. Oh man, this crotch sniffer business. And I will find out what that means. That'll probably piss me off. And I'll probably be back to talk to you guys when I do finally find out what that means. But... What did he mean he won't throw his right hand? Like, th th does he make believe that he's got some scary right hand? Like if we did a contract and it really was, like you really did, you had to lure Chael out there and you had to give him a whole bunch of money. Oh, and then you had to promise to not throw something. Like, let's just say, I don't know what I would ask. Like I had a genie pops out of a bottle and it could actually give me that. Way. I don't know what I would ask for. Is that the thing you asked for with George Monsfeld that he, he doesn't throw the right hand? Where did he get the idea that he's got this right in? I mean, I, I got to tell you, I got a lot of accomplishments. I was very proud of him. Division one in, in athletics. I got outstanding wrestler awards at national championships. I'm very proud of these things. He might not be impressed, but but I was proud of him. I am the reigning Abu Dhabi super fight champion. I won the super fight over Leo Vera. And then they stopped contesting them. So I'm reigning champion. Got the award at home. George Boswell doesn't have any awards. I don't say that to be a dick. I've been praising this guy, but he's talking about his right hand. He talking about he wants to go out and box and or kickbox or whatever it was. And it's like, again, I, I, I've always praised George, but I wouldn't take something from him. If George Mosvidal was an Olympic anything, contender threat candidate some year in judo, taekwondo, one of the wrestling arts, Boxing, all the, all the, whatever they do, I would give that to him right now. If he was a golden glove, he's talking about his right hand. I'm a little confused because he has later in his life, like now, become Joe, Joe Kickboxer. And I, I get a little, I kind of scratch my head and go, hey, George, do you think that we as a community see you as a great kickboxer? Is that what you think? 
And I want to, again, I want to take it for If he was a runner-up in the Golden Gloves, if he won the Golden Gloves, if he was the Florida State champion, if he was the Cuban State I would take nothing from him. If he was a veteran of any striking, or if he was a K-1 veteran, a glory veteran, if he had done anything at all and he had achieved an award, I would give it to him. There are none. He's talking about he's going to pay me a bunch of money and he's going to take his right hand away. I swear to God in heaven above. I didn't even know that that right hand was in George in all fairs. Neither does anybody else. What, do you, what is it you're speaking about? Now, we're just going to do resumes back and forth. Since, since you're, you're, you're make believing that you want to do a fight, right? I, I called George on this just so you guys all understand. Ariel put this out. But in fair, right? I have an ego. I'm, I'm coming to you because... He obviously struck a nerve with me somewhere, but I have a code of anyone, anywhere, anytime, and there is not an exception to that. And to make believe that there's a 55 pounder or to make believe that there's a guy that's delusional or to make believe there's somebody with a ponytail or to make believe that God ever made a man that would be an exception to that is something I take an exception with. And I fought 11 world champions and beat eight of them. And I did it at three different weight classes. And you guys might be proud of me for that. You might not. It's all I got. I'm done, right? It's, it's all I got. George has never beaten a world champion ever. Are you aware of that? I fought 11 of them and beat eight of them. There are currently four people in the hall of fame who I have beat. I believe that Mandalay is going to go in. And I believe that Rampage is going to go in. That's, I think, a record. I don't know that anybody else has beaten four Hall of Fame. That was one of the things about, you know, fighting at three different weight classes. I'm proud of these things. I'm very proud of these things. Don't mean to compare my resume, but I, I had to compare. I, I I got called out by a guy, and I'm I'm a little bit confused. I got called out by a guy take his right hand away. <laughs> what? Why would he take his right hand away? I would never do that. I will never pay you a whole bunch of money, and I will never take a weapon away. When, it, when we start to fighting, I'm going to hurt you really bad with everything, plus things that aren't within the rules. I will offer no apology for that. Very dirty guy. Very, I'm a very, very shady. I, I operate in the gray, right? Like the kids that I like most in life are the ones I met right outside of the principal's office. But George Mosfell apparently believes he's got a right hand. And one of his problems, right? You got to understand. I don't mind being challenged to a fight. It's never happened to me. Never happened. I got a lot of claims I could make that nobody else could make, but that's one of them. I don't think there's anybody that's ever fought that has never been called out. You can go to YouTube, Google, you can check it out right now. Never, ever did somebody call me out. It was different if you did. You could be any size at any time. You would have had to fight. It was a hard fight. George has called me out. I think that I would deal with that okay. I think that I would. But make sure you understand he didn't call me out for a match, okay? Got a hold of Jake Paul three days ago. Say, I'm gonna fight your boy George the night that you fight Tyson. Are we, do we got a deal? And I don't wanna do my breaking point, right? Reach my breaking point, I'm sitting here in isolation. I'm like, to reach my breaking point with George. We're gonna go do this. Jake says, yeah, let's do it. He says, I'm in, that's what he says. Then he calls me back and he says, hey, I didn't talk to George. George. George is on contract somewhere else. I don't know what that means, but he he's on a contract somewhere else. He's not going to do the match. I said, okay, that, yeah, fair enough. I just, but then but then he did he did the Bisping show after this, and he kept talking about me. He kept talking about that. Right? I mean, again, there's rules to think. Maybe George isn't the guy I thought he was. But when I put George over and I talk about his grittiness, I did not think he was the kind of guy that would call somebody out and then not do the fight. When if he right, I didn't call him out. I would never call him out. I would never hold him. He's not 155 pounds. I would never do this. And he, but he somehow put himself on this level of work. He's Joe Kickboxer all of a sudden. Like, like for the skills that he had, his kickboxing was his best skill. But where in his mind did he think like we, the industry, look at him as a great kickboxer? Like those words have never been spoken. Mr. Big Right Hand, I do is that true, by the way? I felt like I watched all of George's fight. Is that true? Is he known for a big right hand? 
Okay, now, my, my final thought on George is my reaction to this isn't from being called into a competition. That's what we do in this sport. I did that to so many other guys, they didn't understand it. And I couldn't understand how they didn't understand it. It's not what George said. It's what he pretended. What he said is that he liked to find me. And he would like to hurt me. Now, as a guy who has said that one other time publicly and then did it, in the dark of night, in disguise, from behind with multiple friends. It's not something that you can just dismiss, right? It's a very different thing. It's a very, very different thing. And it was, it was, it was very compelling, right? Because I can't, I can't stop thinking about how dumb George was. Like Michael laughs at him and then talks about a photo and then suggests a different opponent. And then George somewhere in this is gonna pay me more money. <laughs> he thought that was a cool thing that he was gonna pay more money. What an idiot. Then. He's gonna tie up his right hand. Like, okay, this is great. This is really great. Are you think I'm gonna respect like that? What an idiot, right? Then he says that he's got a promotion called inbred. Oh my God, he doesn't know what inbred means. Like this thing is just going from bad to worse. The whole thing's going from bad to worse. But he states what his problem is finally with me. And it was my breaking of the rules in a sport like this because somebody could get hurt. Now, I think if you stop right there, you're on the moral high ground. That is somewhere I don't care if I'm there or not. But, but if that's what he wanted to be, I, he could have stopped right there. But because of that, he is going to jump me in crime fashion and hurt me. He's going to commit a crime and beat me up because I broke rules and I could have hurt somebody. And you're just standing back and you're saying, you know, George, there's a reason we don't call you big right hand. There's a reason behind your back we call you stupid. But I still don't know why you named your business inbred.